Hey guys, welcome back to Money Matinee. Today we're briefly discussing Inside Out 2. Inside Out 2, directed by Kelsey Mann and produced by Pixar, takes us back into the mind of Riley, now navigating the tumultuous waters of puberty. This sequel attempts to expand the universe introduced by the original Inside Out by diving into the new complex emotions that accompany adolescence. So as Riley enters her teenage years, the puberty alarm rings, ushering in a wave of new emotions at headquarters. Alongside familiar faces like joy, we meet anxiety, embarrassment, envy, ennui, and the occasional nostalgia. These emotions quickly start to influence Riley's actions during a pivotal three-day hockey camp. Anxiety takes control, pushing joy and the other core emotions to the sidelines. The team's mission is to return to headquarters and restore balance before Riley's overwhelming anxiety jeopardizes her high school experience and future. So one of the film's standout elements is the portrayal of anxiety voiced by Maya Hawk. Hawk brings a nuanced performance that captures the multifaceted nature of this emotion, showing how anxiety, while often seen as a hindrance, plays an essential role in Riley's growth. Anxiety isn't depicted as a villain per se, but rather as a complex part of Riley's evolving emotional landscape. This fresh dynamic adds depth to the story and resonates with the real challenges faced during adolescence. It's a familiar, accurate portrayal of anxiety. The chemistry between the voice actors, especially Amy Poehler's Joy and Maya Hawke's Anxiety, is another highlight. Their interactions underscore the internal conflict that Riley experiences as she navigates her teenage years. The cast delivers strong performances, maintaining that charm and wit that fans of the original probably loved. Though probably for contractual reasons, there are some different voices, I think for fear and disgust. And Pixar also creatively introduces new characters such as the nostalgic 2D figures from Riley's childhood TV shows. The film's blend of animation styles here, the 2D among the 3D, is pretty fun to explore and kind of adds a lot visually. Pixar always excels at balancing humor and heart and Inside Out 2 is no exception. The movie definitely navigates from moments of heartfelt emotion and lighthearted humor making it fun for both kids and adults. The comedic elements are well-timed and offer a necessary respite from the emotional intensity of the story. But despite its strengths, Inside Out 2 suffers from a somewhat rushed narrative. The events unfold over a short three-day period, which feels too brief to fully explore the complexities of Riley's new emotions and the significant changes she's undergoing. Only anxiety is given any exploration. This fast pace prevents a deeper exploration of Riley's journey and doesn't allow for that gradual development that made the first movie much more engaging. The introduction of the new characters, particularly the 2D figures, while visually interesting, doesn't really add a lot to the story. These characters seem more like an attempt at humor rather than an integral part of Riley's emotional world. They fall short of the depth and charm as seen in characters of the first movie, such as Bing Bong, Riley's childhood friend, whose absence is keenly felt in the sequel. Fans of the original may feel disappointed by his absence. Given the setting in the back of Riley's mind or things that she's forgotten, it seemed like a perfect opportunity to revisit or honor such a beloved character. Instead, we get new characters that don't quite fill that emotional void left by Bing Bong's absence. And didn't Joy say that she wouldn't let Riley forget about Bing Bong? I don't know. Additionally, the world inside Riley's mind kind of feels less explored this time. Well, including the first movie, there isn't really much to this inside out world. A console and headquarters, a couple of small unexplorable islands, a network of tubes, and endless aisles of shelves. And that's it. Areas like Imagination Land are underutilized, and the repetitive setting of the headquarters and the memory shelves make the internal world less captivating. This lack of exploration kind of diminishes that sense of wonder that is a hallmark in most Pixar movies. Along with the busy background characters that seem to have been pulled from a Monsters, Inc. movie, I wasn't really a fan of the first movie either now that I think about it. So overall, Inside Out 2 does a commendable job of introducing the concept of anxiety, with Maya Hawke's performance being a particular standout. The film successfully balances moments of emotion and humor, making it an enjoyable watch. It's a message that will resonate with anyone, something so relatable, albeit a message that was the same in the first movie. Even those bad emotions are pivotal for our human existence. 
However, the rushed pacing and the missed opportunities to dive deeper into Riley's emotional journey prevent it from reaching the emotional depth of its predecessor. For letter grade, it earns a respectable C+. All right, for further viewing, for those seeking a more nuanced take on puberty, Pixar's Turning Red provides a much more compelling exploration of a girl's coming of age, though not without its faults also. Meanwhile, for live action, Bo Burnham's 8th grade offers a raw and poignant look at the challenges of adolescence. All right, guys, just a quick review. As always, thanks for watching, and see you on the next one.